Okay, we're going to be looking at the scientific method here, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video quite a few times to actually think about this and uh, try to work it out on your own. Here's a quick little story to illustrate uh, the scientific method. Um, we should have milk here and not a frog, and uh, frogs don't produce milk. Do they? Wait, that's a crazy question. No, they don't. I'm just kidding. Louis Pasteur. Have you heard of this guy? Louis Pasteur was a famous scientist. You might have actually heard of this guy's name. Um, we're going to find out at the end here, but let me just uh, read this to you. Or you can pause and read it to yourself. Okay, I want to go really fast. Louis Pasteur is a famous scientist, and he often wondered why milk spoiled so quickly. He thought it might be the breed of cow that caused the problem. He also thought it might be microscopic bacteria, otherwise known as germs, that were causing the premature or early spoiling of the milk. He tested the second idea by boiling the milk to kill the germs. He compared it to an identical sample that was not boiled. He repeated the experiment several times and had other scientists do the same. The results were all the same. The boiled milk spoiled at a much slower rate than the other milk. This process carries his name, pasteurization. All right, we've actually simplified, uh, I've, I've simplified this significantly, but it illustrates the purpose of the scientific method and why we say the science, why, why science is even important to us, why we say the scientific method is important. So if we were to summarize this into five different steps, now if you do a search for a scientific method, depending on the level you're looking at and who you're talking to, um, it could be three steps, it could be five steps, it could be eight steps, but usually that just means they're breaking down some of these steps into smaller, more specific steps. But uh, overall, you're going to try to identify from the story what's happening here. So overall, the first step here, as Louis Pasteur, he made some observations. So can you pause the video and write down what observation, what did he notice that made him think, oh, this is worthy of a discussion or an investigation? Pause the video, write it down. All right, he noticed that the milk spoils quickly. All right, after that, he started to ask questions, ask questions. So pause the video and write down what questions he was asking. Okay, pause. And we're back. Simply, if your words are slightly different, that's okay. Why does the milk spoil so quickly, he said to himself as he scratched his head. And then... He decided to come up with a hypothesis, which is a possible, educated, scientific explanation using some reasonable understanding and some background information. So he came up with a hypothesis. Can you come up with a hypothesis now? Pause the video and write it down. And we're back. Something like this. He said it might be the breed of the cow. And he said it might be the bacteria or the germs causing the milk to spoil. These, these are two separate hypotheses which require two different tests. From this information here, we can see that he goes on to look at this second one. It might be germs causing the milk to spoil. And so he goes on to the next step, which is basically his testing or experimentation phrase. So can you please write down what he actually did for the experiment? Pause the video. And we're back! He boiled the milk to kill the germs. Now, he must have had some knowledge that um, heat, applying heat to something could actually kill some of these microorganisms. So that's some of the background research. So you could act, add an extra step in between here that says do some background research and find out what's going on. But again, these are the basic uh, steps that you would do for designing any experiment. Finally, he looked at the results. I mean, you could say results in between here, but is to draw conclusions as a result of doing the tests and the experiments. Finally, can you pause the video one last time and write down what his conclusion was? And we're back! Boiled milk spoils at a slower rate. So he's concluded that boiling the milk kills the germs and that killing the germs allows the milk to stay fresh a lot longer. So some poor person had to actually go through this process and taste the milk. Have you ever actually accidentally drank milk that's been in the fridge for a long, long, long time and it gets really stinky and sour, but you just happened to have a stuffy nose that day, so you didn't know and you put it in your mouth and you tasted it and you went back and spat it out and felt really yucky afterwards. It happens to me every day.
Oh, that means it's time for homework. Let's move on. Scientific methods. So really quickly, uh, for the rest of your handout, if you take a look, repeat the same process here with this scenario. So you might have to make up a few things. Uh, for example, doing an experiment. But if you were to apply the scientific process as we just went through to this scenario with a bunch of frogs disappearing, um, you can answer these questions or it doesn't have to be the left side of your notebook. I'm going to cross that out by putting a lot of smiley faces. Come up with a plan using the scientific method for how you would address the situation. You have a choice. You can either answer these questions or you can just make a little table and go through these boxes just like this. They're addressing the same thing actually. So go ahead and take a look at that. And I prefer this frog over this one. Have a nice day.